Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at a very cool and bizarre dinosaur model. It's the 2018 Papo Therizinosaurus. This model is relatively new. It came out at the end of the summer last year. So it's been out for less than a year now. You can uh, pick this guy up for around $25 from EverythingDinosaur.com or around 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description to Amazon and Everything Dinosaur if you're interested in picking this guy up. Therizinosaurs are very weird species of dinosaurs. They evolved at some point from theropod dinosaurs and eventually evolved into herbivores, which is really neat. They're very bizarre looking. Um, this Papa model perfectly captures just how weird these dinosaurs were. They look like big giant murder turkeys. Therizinosaurus is known from incomplete remains. It's mostly just the arms, a couple rib bones, and some other fragments. Most of what we know what this animal looked like is from more complete species in the genus like Northronychus. Some of the characteristics of Therizinosaurus is that they had a long neck with a small skull on top with a toothless beak, very large arms. I think they had, Therizinosaurus had the second longest arms of any living creature. The first one is Dinochirus. They had these big, wide stomachs because the species, this genus had very wide hips, short back legs, and a short tail. And this model does a really good job of capturing the essence of Therizinosaurus. So let's take out the uh, tape measure and get some measurements on this guy. He stands about eight and a half inches tall and from the claw to the tip of the tail about seven inches. And one thing about this model it's really solid and it has some pretty decent heft to it so you don't want this falling on you with these stabby stabby hand claws so let's take a closer look at some of the finer details on this model the head is beautifully sculpted nice and small you got a nice toothless beak with that little keratin sheath over it the jaw is articulated you can see a nice painted row of teeth in there. The tongue is well textured, detailed. The whole inside of the mouth is beautifully detailed. He's very awkward to pull close to the camera because he's such a tall model. There's a nice layer of feathers down at the top of the head. It actually goes down the whole back. They kind of went with a half feathered look for this. It goes all the way down the back base of the tail, the legs are fully feathered, the arms are fully feathered, the rest of the animal is not. There is no direct evidence that Therizinosaurus had feathers, so this is just all interpretation right now. I really don't mind the half feathered look on this model. It looks it looks good to me. I like it. It doesn't bother me. I know some people they either want them all feathered or not at all. This is a good in-between. You can see some nice texturing going down the neck. You can see the neck muscles bend in a lot of creases. Papo always does a pretty much a fantastic job on most of their dinosaurs. They always look so alive, like they're just like a snapshot in time. Now the hands on the arms right here, you got some nice row of feathers with black and white paint. The hands are enormous. Now, the, this is the one thing that just bothered me a little bit about this model. On Therizinosaurus, these claws should be a lot longer and straighter. So, I'm going to move this guy off to the side for one second because in the background right here, I actually have a full-size cast of the hand claw of Therizinosaurus. And it is a 
Very big claw. I can't even fully get it into the shot. Let me try to stretch my arm back and keep the camera focused at the same time. You can see the claw is pretty much straight until it gets to about the tip. And this would be even bigger in real life. It would be covered in a nice keratin sheath and, and this would be like almost a three foot long claw. And it is the largest claw of any living animal. When the claw was first found, they thought it belonged to some type of turtle until they found more bones and realized it was a dinosaur. I took this claw outside the other day to do a little, you know, extinction photo shoot. I got a pretty large collection of full-size fossil cast and I used one of my little uh, helpers to help with the shoot. I know a few people have uh, requested that some of my, if you know anything about me, I keep a pretty good sized collection of reptiles. So this is my little helper that was in the photos I just showed you. This is Tipsy. She is a very squirmy, blotched blue ton skink. And if you know anything about blue ton skinks, especially uh, blotched blue tongues, just how rare this species is outside of Australia in collection. She is a absolutely gorgeous animal that is perpetually in motion. So just wanted to show off quick. A couple of people have asked for uh, some of my reptiles to make appearance in these videos. So request granted. And let me just put her back. All right, now we're getting back to the review. So, like I said earlier, I, I just wish the hand claws on this were a little longer and straighter. So, still on the hands here, you can see the palms have a lot of nice scale detail underneath there. Th this whole figure is just packed with tons of detail. You got a nice outline of the pectoral muscles, that huge gut that therizinosaurs are usually depicted in. Some nice folds of skin running down the side. The overall color of this figure, like the legs are a dark brown. The feathers, and like starting on the head, are almost like a teal blue. And it's mostly a brown figure. And you got these little yellow dots on the side. And that continue across the, sh the chest to break up the pattern. You can see the ribs along the side. A lot of nice, not a lot of scalation. It's mostly like, kind of like an elephant skin texture. Looks really nice. You got a big row of scales along the stomach, which is a yeah, pretty cool looking pattern on it. Now going down to the feet. On therizinosaurs, the fourth toe in other theropod dinosaurs is usually very small and reduced. It's normally called a dew claw. In therizinosaurs, this fourth toe would be a weight-bearing toe. And the way it's depicted in this model, it's kind of still almost in that dew claw position, but it is much more pronounced in therizinosaurs than other theropods. Let me just whip out another model to show you what I mean. This is the Papo Aquacanthosaurus. You can see that fourth toe is just reduced to pretty much being useless on the side of the foot. And now getting now moving down to the tail. The tail is very short and thick. I feel like the tail is a little too short in this model. I mean Therizinosaurs weren't known for having the longest tail. I just feel it should have been a a hair longer. You got this nice plumage which is the same pattern as what's on the arm right here. You can see, like from the back here, just how wide and pot-bellied the Rosinosaurs were. Now, I think the hips should be a little wider on this model. I mean, there's I don't think there's any hip bones found for the Rosinosaurus, but I know like on Northernicus, the hip region was very wide, which is a characteristic of this genus. So, I feel like this is just, if it was spread out just a little bit, 
it'll be more accurate, but all in all, this is absolutely fantastic that was in a source fig. Like my only gripe is that I just wish the hand claws were a little bit bigger. Now going on getting onto the pose of this guy, it looks like I mean it has that little articulated jaw. It looks like he could be fighting off a predator, you know, rearing up high, make himself look bigger, using those formidable claws to ward off attacker. You can sub in this is the uh, Safari Feather T Rex, which stands fantastically. You can have a sub in as a Tarbosaurus if you would like, or you can pose it like in a diorama, like it's using its hands, which scientists think it would be to forage and pull in, pull down branches and food into its mouth. So I'm gonna take out a few other figures for a size comparison. First, we're gonna start off with the. Collect A. There is an Asaurus. And you can see on this model, the claws are much longer and straighter, which is, I wish they would be on this model. And also, like I was talking earlier about the hip region, on the Collector model, the hips are really wide. Got a lot of junk in the trunk with this one. And same thing, what they did on the Collector model with the uh, fourth toe, they kind of use it as a prop to help it stand on two legs and next up I just had this guy out a little bit earlier is the Safari Feather T-Rex so they size up to each other Therizinosaurus was a big animal about 33 feet long so definitely could uh, probably hold its own up to some uh, carnivores is shared in its ecosystem. And next is the 2018 Papo Acrocanthosaurus, which is my favorite Papo model of all time. And let's take out some classic Papo models. Here is the original brown Velociraptor. And last but not least, the iconic Papo Green Standing T-Rex. Those two actually look pretty good together. Get a nice little fight scene with them. So, those comparisons out of the way. Final thoughts on this figure. I think it's great. I really like it. It just really encompasses just how truly bizarre the species of dinosaur was. It's great to look at. It's a nice hefty model. A lot of weight to it. Love the color scheme on it. I don't mind the half feathered look. Like I have mentioned a few times already. Just wish the claws were a little bit bigger. For the price, I think it's a fantastic model. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'll leave the links to everything dinosaur and Amazon.com if you want to pick this guy up. So. Highly recommend this guy. It's a really cool figure to add to your collection. And as always, guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're liking these reviews. It helps the channel grow a lot. And I'll see you for the next one.